Hello, everyone. I like to say hey to my new subscribers. Um, thank you for, <coughs> excuse me, following along in my journey. <coughs> excuse me. Um, thanks to everyone who's following my blog on Facebook, Chipmunk Chronicles. Thanks for the messages and the emails. And there are a few of you who really, <clears throat> you know, um, text or make a comment or send an email that, you know, just lets me know that, like, you're really following me and paying attention and you're tapped into, you know, um, just me as I, um, as I blaze this trail, and I just want to say specifically that I really appreciate it because it means a lot, you know, when you are attempting to um, do something that's um, so brazen and so unusual and not necessarily popular. Um, setting out to be a single mother is not something that uh, we do. <laughs> so, um, not always on purpose and whatnot, but I just wanted to let you know I appreciate you. <clears throat> so up to date, well, to date, um, my MRI was initially denied. I think I told you guys that. Uh, had I not made a phone call to follow up on what was going on with it, uh, the error would not have been caught. Uh, simply, the third party company, Evacor, said that they faxed uh, the urogynecologist uh, what they were suggesting. And um, that office said they, did, they didn't get it. Uh, they didn't get an email, they didn't get a fax. And um, my urogynecologist wants, wanted a um, MRI with contrast. <clears throat> the third party company, their doctor on staff who looked at all my files and things said that he was recommending or he would offer, they would approve a MRI, an MRI with, without contrast. Now, mind you, I wasn't understanding the difference. The problem came when I stopped someone and I says, what's the difference between MRI with contrast, MRI with, without contrast? The woman was saying with and without contrast, <clears throat> which is actually better, which is actually uh, more beneficial for the doctor, for the urogynecologist to see what's going on. So, I mean, that, that's great favor that the insurance is willing to cover something that the doctor didn't necessarily ask for, but is in actuality more beneficial and better. Uh, and probably cost a little bit more money, but I guess that's saving down the line because, you know, how would you know what to compare it to? Either way, um, when I was told by the third party company that they were waiting to hear from uh, the urogynecologist, I called them back because I'm like, hey, you guys have been on it. And, you know, I, I just didn't believe that they did not respond and say, yes, we'll take that. Either way, <clears throat> I called the third party company back and I wanted to speak to someone about the representative who called me and that she was not clear. She was not speaking clearly. I told her that I didn't understand what she was saying and they speak so fast. And when people use jargon every day, the lingo every day, this is their script, this is their, you know, their whole spiel and they do it all day every day. They don't realize that they're talking fast. They know what they're saying. We don't know what the hell they're saying. So <clears throat> they basically told me they don't know who called me. It shows that I was spoken to, but it doesn't say who it was and that I could submit a complaint, but basically it wasn't gonna go anywhere. I said, oh, well, I'm not satisfied with that. Put me on the line with a supervisor. Essentially, they did not want to grant me that. I says, why can't you put me on the phone with a supervisor? Well, I could have a senior um, analyst call you back. I don't want to talk to a senior analyst. I want to talk to a supervisor, especially since you're telling me that my complaint basically won't go anywhere. I'm not satisfied with that. 
I don't like the way the phone call was handled. So, 24 to 48 hours <clears throat> has passed, and I ain't heard from them. But that's okay, because I got their number, and I will be calling Evacor back. Um, while I appreciate them offering something that was more beneficial for my situation, I'm an advocate for myself. And I can't let these people get away with, you know, Ha mishandling phone calls where people and patients don't understand what's going on. So had I not caught this, my MRI would have just been denied. And if I didn't follow up on it, I wouldn't have even known that something better was there and, and was being offered. Anyway, I went to have my MRI on Monday. and it was unsuccessful and it was incomplete. I had two back spasms during the MRI. I had to press the distress button <clears throat> and end the MRI. The technician came in after the segment ended and I pressed the button and he said, are you okay? And I'm like, no, kind of no. I said, I was trying to wait till the segment was over until I stopped hearing that buzzing to press the button. He said, oh, no, I heard you over the music. I could hear you through the bay, and I stopped the segment. So I got up. He gave me some water. I walked around. I stretched it out, got back on the table, tried to get a little bit more comfortable. My junk in the trunk would not allow me to lay flat on this table. Ten minutes later, I had another back spasm. He says, you know what, we can stop this now. I'd rather you stop now than to uh, keep going. Then you go home and you're wrecked and you can't get up in the morning for work. I suggest you get your doctor to prescribe you diazepam, lorazepam, anything with a PAM on the end, I quote. So <clears throat> I did just that. I made the calls. I um, got a prescription for the diazepam. But I didn't get the call quick enough so that I could go back the next day, which would have been Tuesday. So I had to cancel that appointment. I did go get my medicine when it was finally called in Tuesday night. I rescheduled the MRI for Wednesday, which was last night. And uh, so I took the diazepam as instructed by the doctor. One hour before the appointment, and if I still felt uneasy at the appointment. I did just that. The technician says... You should have took it all at once. That way you would have just been calm, relaxed, and just practically sleep during the MRI. So I had about I had one more I had an eight minute segment left and a twelve minute segment left, and that would have included the contrast. So he injected me with the contrast. So I had about a good 30-ish minutes left to complete this MRI. And it's very important that you get exactly positioned where you were before so that the pictures come out consistent. I managed to do that. I was still a little bit more alert than I should have been because of the way I took the medicine. So I should have taken it just 20 minutes before the appointment and then just got in to the machine. So... It was open, MRI, which helped. It's, it's, it was not the capsule. That helps. Um, the technician was very cool. And after I got the injection, it was an extreme discomfort. It was a warm feeling. It did give me kind of a relaxed, sleepy feeling. But um, just the thought of it and just the, the process of trying to fix this, manage this, put out a fire, figure out what's going on, remembering what I read about what they were going to be injecting and how it stays in your system for years, and they want to make sure you don't have any allergies, and just waiting to get this MRI done since September 11th. It just all came down on me, and next thing you know, I'm just, I'm just full of tears. And so I stopped crying before the technician came in, and he was like, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. So I got dressed and I left and I went home and I was just 
and I am still just in a mood. Um, it's just a lot, you know, um, it's a lot. And, and it's, it's not that I don't want to do it. It's not that I'm, um, don't understand why I'm doing it. I know it's going to pay off. You know, I know that this, these steps are taking me closer and closer to what I want, but this shit is exhausting. And there's no platitude that can take away this exhaustion. <clears throat> Nothing. Not a damn word. I am tired. I'm not quitting, but I'm just tired. I'm not resentful. I'm just tired. I'm not complaining. This is just a chronicle of the shit that I'm doing by myself <laughs> as I have chosen to do. It just doesn't make it any easier. And the shit's exhausting. Like four years of this, poking and prodding and testing and lab work and <clears throat> procedures and minor surgeries and oscopies and ostomies and <sighs> gosh this shit is a lot tell everybody you know to freeze their eggs <laughs> freeze their eggs I mean that will help the process it won't fix everything but <sighs> it, it will it will put you it will catapult you further down the fertility line. Lord have mercy. 20s, early 30s, freeze your eggs. But anyway, I'm just exhausted. And I'm sad. And I cried last night. And I just, I just lost it when I got home. <clears throat> good news. You know, when you receive, you're in these appointments and you get good news. It's like you're by yourself. I'm, I'm, I've been by myself. If I get bad news, I'm, I'm by myself. If I get confusing news or if I'm trying to remember what the doctor said and recall what they said, I'm I, by myself. And it's just, it's heavy. And I'm not saying, you know, don't do it. I mean, if you got the balls, do it. Just hear me when I say, Hear me when I say, it's a lot. So yeah, the gynecologist, the urogynecologist will get the results today. So, and from what I understand, he's out of town. So I don't know if his nurse practitioner is gonna call me or what. So, a waiting game, right? Because when you're a specialist, you get to go out of town. <laughs> Come back when you wanna, and you get to have fucked up hours where no one can get an appointment with you unless they take off work. Woohoo! Yep. All right, y'all. Peace and gratitude as always. Thank you much. <laughs>